Greetings folks and welcome to the Electromaker Show. This is your midweek roundup of all things Maker and Embedded and Lovely. Now this week we have a full show with the Things on Funding website, some awesome projects and a fairly unique opportunity to support people who are fighting the pandemic in India. We will of course also be having a mystery box competition so with all that to get through let's get started with the show. Before we get started, a little quick housekeeping. If you're not subscribed to the Electromaker channel, please consider doing so. It shouldn't change your usage of YouTube all that much, but it will let them know that you're enjoying what we do. Uh, also, clicking the notification bell is a really big signifier to YouTube that you do like the show so much you want notifications, but you will be notified whenever we put a video up onto the channel. Now, realistically, that's usually only once a week. This is the main show for the Electromaker channel, so if you are enjoying it, yeah, please do uh, click that notification bell, as YouTubers say. And finally, if you click like, it's a very good way of showing YouTube that, well, you like it. I do love reading your comments on our videos, but there is no obligation to leave them. And if you just want to come and hang out in a more informal environment, we have a Discord server. There'll be a link to it in the description. Finally, if you do want to support us financially, we do have a shop at electromaker.io. Anyway, that is a lot of information about the show up front, so let's actually get on with it, shall we? We're going to start this week's show with an article on Hackaday about a group of makers in Goa um, called Makers Asylum. Now, this is a group of makers and hackers that have a shared space that are uh, trying to do something, anything, about the increasingly terrible situation in India with the uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic, which is currently uh, in a really terrible state. Uh, this show, I know, has a very global audience. And if you are watching from India, I do hope that you are safe and well. I work day-to-day uh, -day as a writer with many people from India, and the situation over there seems very grim. So this could be seen as somewhat of a ray of light. Uh, the team are hoping to create the OxyKit Oxygen Concentrators. That is an open source project that was also made in response to the pandemic last year. Um, and uh, it is a completely, as it says here, an open hardware project for creating oxygen concentrators. Um, and this is the same team, um, which I can't remember if we ended up reporting on this last year or not, but this is the same team that shut themselves into their maker space in order to make masks. Um, uh, I remember this making the news, uh, the maker news as it were. I don't know if we actually covered it on the show for some reason, and I don't know why we wouldn't. Um, so... I will leave a link to this Hackaday article in the description of the video. That's where I've collated all this information from. It also has a video of the original OxyKit. The one thing I really do want to draw attention to is that they have a crowdfunding page. So if you want to support them uh, in making these oxygen concentrators at a time when it is definitely uh, an important and pressing thing they could be doing, this is a financial way that you can support them. Now, just a couple of weeks ago, we talked about the ESP32C6, which is the newer variation of the ESP32, a single core RISC-V chip with built-in Wi-Fi 6 capabilities. And since then, a few things have happened. Most notably, AI Thinker have released a whole swathe of ESP32C3 chips with a few interesting properties. Now we'll be taking this information from the always fantastic CNX software um, and I suggest you go and read this article for yourself, there'll be a link in the description, I won't have time to go into all of the detail, but in short the new ESP32C3 modules uh, are drop-in replacements for some of the older ones. So for example, this is a very small chart for me as well, um, uh, uh, yeah, you can go and try and make sense of it if you want, although it's explained better in the text down here. Um, this column for example here is the ESP12F, uh, which is the... Uh, uh, form factor for the ESP32 chips, the kind of thing you'll have on most of your little node MCU boards that you may have got before the ESP32 sort of took over there. Now, the ESP32C3F uh, is meant to replace the ESP12F, which means that, not to say that you would, but you could technically take your little node's development board and just take that chip off and put this one on. It's, it's a, a pin for pin replacement, um, but it comes with a few nice new things as well. So, for example, as well as more general purpose input and output pins on the newer chips, you also get I2S, you get a DAC, which I always find exciting because digital to audio conversion, in my mind, is always microcontroller to music conversion, that's the way I think of it, um, SDIO and infrared remote. Another benefit will be longer battery life thanks to much lower power consumption in sleep modes. Now, this is really quite impressive um, because getting the ESP8266 to play uh, nice with sleep is been a bit of a nightmare and there's been some really uh, interesting blog posts written in the past as to everything you can strip off a development board to get it to work in deep sleep mode but it still really used too much power to be practical. It's gone from 2000 uh, microamps down to 130 microamps. That is a very very small amount of power it is using in deep sleep mode for what is ostensibly a more powerful chip. 
So yes, this is super interesting and these new chips do look fantastic in terms of uh, power to power consumption and price as well. That's another thing I haven't mentioned. Um, as it says down here, uh, 179 for 100 to 1000 units and uh, 138 for more than 10,000 units. So I mean, with numbers like that, this is obviously going to be sold to people who are either making their own development boards or doing runs of their own. Um, this isn't really uh, aimed at me, for example. I would want to get a hobby development board. Um, now, I'm sure you can get them in the 1s, 2s, 5s, and 10s, but would I get this and then go my old ESP8266 uh, boards and then take the package off and then put a new package on? Probably not. Um, still, it's exciting that these new chips have come out, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what uh, really crazy low-power, high-connectivity development boards we get out of this new chipset from Espresso. Moving on to Embedded Dev 2021. Now, this is a uh, contest being run by RT Thread, that is the open source real time operating system. Um, and uh, essentially, the contest is uh, come up with an idea for a project using RT Thread on uh, any development board of your choice, and a certain number of those uh, proposed projects will be chosen, and RT Thread will buy that development board so you can make the project a reality. A really nice way of running a contest, quite similar to the contests that are uh, uh, run on Electromaker.io that I've talked about in the past. Um, and, and weirdly enough, uh, this is being uh, documented on the Electromaker platform. And I did check. Um, we aren't actually uh, affiliated with this contest. Uh, they just chose to use this as a platform, which is very, very nice. Thank you. Thank you very much, RT Thread. Um, that's lovely. Um, and yes, uh, if you want to take part in this, um, you can win $500 in cash if you do win. Um, the application form is open. Um, and so uh, you can read through this to see if it, you want to enter the competition. Although I have more or less explained it. Um, you uh, uh, submit a project that you want to uh, achieve, as it says here. Um, and you can do that by filling out their uh, application form here. Um, and the application period is open until May 19th. So you still have a bit of time if you are interested in looking into it. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of interested in this. I, I, I don't think I have the time to enter. I don't know if I'm allowed to enter. I think I am because we're not affiliated with it. Either way. Uh, yes, RT Thread, uh, real-time operating systems, super fascinating. If it's something that you want to get into and have an idea for a project, this might be a nice entry point. It is time to delve back into the world of funding website things. And this week we have a couple of things from CrowdSupply that are yet to launch, but look quite interesting. The first of which is the AT Tiny Flasher, which is an open hardware tool for, unsurprisingly, flashing Atmel AT Tiny packages. Um, and as you can see, there's a number of ways you can do it. I mean, um, it attaches to a breadboard here, so you can put it in uh, in the middle line of the breadboards, or you can actually attach it via the headers here. Um, there's a Nano here, which is used for the in-between programmer and uh, a little OLED screen. Um, but you can use this for uh, the full line of uh, Atmel chips as well. There's a, a separate programmer just here. Um, in fact, there's a couple of things about this that I find super interesting. Um, so yeah, as, as I said here, there's various different uh, AT uh, Tiny 85 through to the AT Tiny 13, all the ones that are this package size. But you can do the entire MCU family using the uh, in serial programmer uh, header, as I've just said. But um, you can use whatever IDE you like, uh, Arduino, Platform I, uh, IO, or any IDE of your choice, which is nice. Um, and you can stream serial data to the host PC, even if you're using something as small as an AT Tiny 13. Now that I find fascinating and a really cool thing. Um, now this isn't launched yet, as you can see from the, the formatting of the page. If you are interested, you can always enter the box here. Um, I will be coming back to this one, uh, uh, not least because I have a whole box of uh, AT Tiny chips that I very rarely get out and fiddle with and play with. And uh, this seems like a very fun way of actually using them uh, a little bit easier. Um, as you know, uh, I am a great fan of getting in the weeds and trying to learn how to program things completely with bare metal. But when I only have half an hour to mess around with something, it gets a bit old sometimes. Anyhow, I shall leave a link to this in the description of the video, along with a link to this. Now, this is a Navi Macro Pad 2. Uh, it is an open source programmable two key mechanical keyboard with backlighting, and it might look a little bit familiar. And it might be familiar because of this. This is the uh, Anavi MacroPad 8, or Anavi, I might be pronouncing it wrong. Either way, this is, as you can see, an eight key backlit uh, MacroPad with a, an OLED screen. Um, and uh, they raised $15,000 on CrowdSupply to bring it to life. And there was various kit versions you could get. But in general, um, you had a, a 36 or $44 version, which came with a mechanical uh, key switches and caps. Um, and everything you need. I think the, these didn't come with the OLED screen as such. Ah, there it is. Okay, and you could get the separate OLED screen. The point is, it is relatively cheap. 
So it seems likely that the two key version will be quite cheap as well. And look at it, it's so cute and little. It uses an 80 tiny 85, interestingly, having just talked about it. Um, and we will definitely be coming back to this one when it launches. Um, because yeah, um, you might say, what can you do with just two macro keys? But to be honest, if you ask me, if you only have a couple of macro keys, you're gonna pick them well. And I quite like the idea of having a very small macro pad just off my mouse hand for certain things that I, you know, want an extra hand for when I'm editing or something like that. Um, but yeah, this, this is a lovely little thing. We'll definitely be coming back to it. It is time for the mystery box competition. Now, it is a very simple competition. It is a mystery box, as it says here, provided by the wonderful people at Mauser, as it says here. And pretty much every week, I take a random comment from the week before's show and then reach into the box, and then that person will win whatever I pull out of the box. So, let's see what the prize is for this week. Oh, this is a neural compute stick. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, this is the this is the neural compute stick. Now, if you are not familiar, um, I will just see. Oh, this box is already unstuck, so I can maybe show it to you. This is uh, essentially Intel's version of the uh, Google Edge coprocessor USB stick that you can get. This is a little stick that you can plug into uh, pretty much any kind of computer, and it will allow you to do machine learning and train neural networks and such. And that is actually properly packaged in there. I will not open that up. So rather than open the nice closed packaging, um, I'll just show you here. This is what it looks like. It is a USB stick. It looks a bit like a USB drive. And as I mentioned, it's very similar to the USB coprocessor that Google have put out. There's a few things like this. Um, and this can be used with any computer, but uh, ideally you're going to use it with something a little bit more low powered like a Raspberry Pi to add a little bit more grunt for uh, machine learning and neural network type things. Uh, and to give an example of what that might mean, uh, there's an, uh, a project here by Chen Wei Tsang. Um, I did a bit of Googling to see what projects have been done with it. And this uses object detection or person detection in this case, which is uh, detecting uh, Chen Wei himself um, and has a turret that moves the camera around to follow him. And our winner this week is Gordon Margalu. I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name, um, who points out that the Axon board, which we featured on last week's show, it's a Kickstarter, looked quite interesting, and indeed it does. So congratulations, we'll be in touch with you as to how we can get your address to send this compute stick out to you. And as mentioned, on every week that we don't give away a specific prize with a specific way of entering, like we did last week with the NXP development board, um, we'll be giving away something random from the mystery box until the mystery box is empty, and then perhaps the fine people at Mauser will refill it for us once more. We will have to wait and see. Anyway, uh, that's enough waffling. Let's get on with the show. And now a few projects and tutorials I have seen on the internet this week that I thought were worth looking at, starting with Alan Pan. And this is a video game microwave, which essentially takes a microwave oven and uh, attaches it to a retro gaming machine and makes it so that the microwave only works while you are gaming. Um, and uh, you, uh, you might be wondering why, and why not? If you're not familiar with Alan Pan, he runs the Sufficiently Advanced YouTube channel where he creates a variety of uh, crazy things, um, all of which sort of fit quite neatly into the maker sphere. He's done a lot of things with Raspberry Pi voice control, things including Arduinos, and this project is no different. This is essentially using an Arduino Uno to attach a retro gaming device to a microwave, um, and he calls himself a failed Mythbuster for the specific uh, reason that he was on the Strange Mythbusters uh, reality TV show that happened after main Mythbusters ended and was one of the people that was eliminated from it, and ever since he has been known as the failed Mythbuster. Anyway, um, this is actually a video on the Wired YouTube channel, um, but if you check it out and uh, if you check out his channel Sufficiently Advanced, which is here in the uh, description, you will find a lot more videos. This one specifically I thought was quite funny just because it seems to uh, match a couple of things that we commonly come across in the show, which is uh, retro gaming devices, um, uh, household items, and turning them into smart devices using Arduinos, um, and where those two things can in intersect in a sort of silly and funny way. It kind of fitted to me. Yep, yep, I can relate to that. Up next, an explainer on the Seed Studios website about LoRaWAN gateways and nodes, and long-range communication in general. Now, um, long-range is something that, while I understand it to an extent, and I haven't really played with it enough to have a deep understanding of it, um, and this is a really good high-level uh, primer for how the entire thing works. Um, so, for example, you may uh, have heard terms like physical layer and, uh, and access control um, and know roughly what they do, but this gives a quite nice just general uh, uh, overview using diagrams and easy-to-understand language and filled a couple of gaps, certainly that I had in my mind. Um, as someone who talks about long-range communication a fair bit, and as someone who's uh, talked about boards you can get on here, I realized there's quite a lot of stuff that I just simply didn't know. And this is a fairly lengthy and good explainer of all of it. Um, uh, so it lets you know the kind of uh, things that you might use it for, the kind of uh, equipment you will need to get started developing with it, and all the terminology involved as well. 
Also, this being an explainer from Seed, there are various links to different hardware you can use to get started with it. So you can get that from here. Or if you really want to support the show, you can even head to the Electromaker website who also sell Seed products. Was that, was that a subtle, subtle self-promotion? Is it allowed? Oh, thank goodness we've got our own shop to promote. I mean, can you imagine how awkward it would be if I had to try and gently shoehorn in a Raid Shadow Legends advert into the middle of our nice little show about microcontrollers? It would be dreadful. Moving on to the Arduino blog and a project that combines the Arduino Maker um, and a few components you will find in almost any Arduino starter kit uh, to make a project that just works. It's simple and it's nice and it logs how much coffee you are drinking. Too much, always too much. I'm joking, of course, there is no such thing as too much coffee, uh, but this is very cool. Um, this uses uh, a microphone, actually, as the way of sensing it, because Nespresso machines are fairly loud, which means that this thing can sit happily on the machine without having to actually hack it whatsoever, which is quite nice, because Nespresso machines aren't cheap either. Um, so yeah, you have your little microphone component here, which is attached to the board. There is also a button and an LED for resetting things. Um, and you can essentially set the threshold volume to trigger a I have had a cup of coffee on here. Um, and uh, it's a nice project because it covers a few important elements of how these kind of logging projects can work out in the field, as it were. So in a sort of pseudo code way, uh, this is basically saying, okay, a certain uh, threshold volume has been met, so that means a cup of coffee has been drunk. Let's uh, leave a note on the SD card saying, cup of coffee has been drunk at this time. Um, and then later you can take that SD card out and you have a load of timestamps with when coffee was drunk, and you can make a nice little chart out of it. This is a lovely little project by Stedman Thompson, and I will leave a link to the Arduino blog here. And from here, you can also make the jump around to their post they made on Hackaday about it as well. In last week's show, there was Doom on a bootloader, and Jeff in the comments said, I wonder how long it'll be before Doom is on my soldering iron. I'm afraid it has already happened, Jeff. And finally this week, a fantastic project from Sulfuroid on Twitter. Now, uh, this is a project that uses the Nokia E63, which is a smartphone from back in the day, which is very, very similar to a kind of BlackBerry form factor. It has a full keyboard and a screen, but this is uh, cloning the PCB, allowing it to work with a, a Raspberry Pi Zero in the original case of the Nokia phone. It's just astonishing. And here it is actually inside the body of the phone, and as you can see, it seems to fit rather well. There's also a video of it as well. Um, now, one thing about this that I find uh, really quite striking is that, that this, this is the um, original keyboard from the phone. Um, there are micro switches under each key, so uh, you just put in the new PCB, put the original keyboard back in, and it will work. Um, that's, that's really quite neat and really quite tidy. Um, and as you can see, that's where the screen is going to fit. Now, this is as much as has been put up quite uh, yet. Uh, this is only from 21 hours ago as I filmed this, um, but there will be more to come. Um, and I uh, I noticed this bef uh, before when I was just putting things together for the show, um, but I just noticed now is that this is actually going to be uh, on sale from Morphians. And if that name sounds familiar to you, um, that is because we featured the Morph uh, 420 or the Morph ESP 240 or something, which is a crowd supply device using the ESP32 s2 chip and a little oled screen on the board um it's something we talked about on the show a while ago on crowd supply um and yeah it looks like uh, they will be uh, selling them uh for sulfuroid um i haven't done any digging to see if sulfuroid is one of the morphians or not um uh, who knows but still yes what a wonderful thing what a beautiful uh, uh you know how i feel about uh, new technology old stuff i love it what a great project i'll leave a link to this twitter thread in the description and you can find the morphians twitter from there too uh, to follow them to find out how to get your hands on one of these although of course uh, we're all gonna have to go on ebay and find old nokia phones as well now to put them in that was our show for this week. Thank you so much for joining me. As I mentioned at the start of the show, if you would like to like this video and comment, that would be appreciated. It would help the show out a lot. And there is, of course, the Electromaker Discord server. If you head to the link in the description, you can come and join the discussion there. But for now, I hope you have a safe and healthy week, and I will see you in the next show.